Okay, so today I wanted to uh, take a look at my bench power supply here. And uh, this is just one of them. Uh, this is the smallest, uh, physically smallest unit that I've uh, built yet. And uh, it was uh, an interesting project. It's not a traditional bench power supply. It's very basic. There's quite a few uh, constraints that I put on myself while building it. And uh, it started out actually with me looking around for uh, transformers. And I stumbled across the electronic transformer, which I talked about in a previous video. And uh, this is actually what I was looking for. So, or uh, looking for transformers for was to, uh, to be building bench, uh, a couple more bench power supplies. And uh, that got me to thinking, because uh, somebody said you can't use them uh, in lieu of a regular transformer. They're only good for, uh, for lighting. So when somebody says you can't use something, uh, that's a good motivation for me to, to uh, prove that things can be done. So this is not a, uh, the most correct power supply, um, bench supply in any means. It is very basic because I did wind up with a couple other requirements. My goal was to try and keep the cost down to around $10 not including the uh, the case in that because this is, uh, you know, you can get creative and, and salvage uh, cases in that, which is what I did in this case. And I actually had this, uh, this box here. It was, uh, it contained a small transformer and a heating and a relay for a uh, heating system. And uh, that's what I wanted it all to fit into. So it doesn't have adjustable overcurrent protection. It's uh, fixed built into the regulator. It's a switching regulator because I didn't really care too much about the uh, the noise uh, on the thing. Uh, I figured I'd be using it to power mostly uh, either local, uh, I'd have local regulation on my circuits, or I was going to be using it on digital stuff where I wanted a bit of noise anyways. It's a great way to test um, if you can use you know, fairly noisy and crappy power supply and get your circuit to work, then there's a good chance that you're not going to encounter noise once it's built up. Uh, you know, if you're powering it, especially off something like batteries or with a linear regulator. So let's take a, a look inside of this thing and uh, we'll see what I did. So it's fairly simple. I tried to keep it uh, as simple as possible and keep the cost down. So of course the first thing I did was I added a fuse in line, uh, power comes into this switch, and then I have an inline fuse going into this electronic transformer. Now the output comes out and it goes on to this first lower board down here. And I added in a, uh, a second fuse in there just to keep this thing from being loaded down too much. Uh, so there's a four amp slow blow fuse in there. Now, as I had mentioned, these don't operate properly without a minimum load. So I don't know how well it'll show up, but you can sort of see under there, there is a series of resistors and actually there's 34 of them. They're 1K, uh, 17 in parallel, which are in series with another bank of 17 in parallel. So it gives about a, well, I got to do the math again, but I think that'll work out to 120, 150 ohms, somewhere in there. And that provides a constant load and that's right off of the, uh, the main coming in here, that, uh, that AC. Then it goes through this fuse and I've got some diodes that I had here. Uh, next, I've gone overkill with the uh, the input filtering here. There's two uh, 10,000 mic uh, electrolytic caps here, 25 volts. Uh, I didn't want to go with 16 because that's too close to what the uh, rectified output is. I like to go, you know, considerably higher and then generally I don't have problems with the caps. 
they're not particularly great. They are a cheaper brand. Um, but like I said, I was trying to keep the cost down. Next, the power, the rectified unregulated DC jumps up with these two wires onto this top board. And uh, that's where the regulation happens. So I wanted a fixed five volt um, output on this thing. And I decided to add a USB port, which I just realized um, when I just did up the uh, bill of materials here, I forgot to include that, but uh, it's not really necessary. I just wanted to provide power over uh, a USB port for, for charging and for powering things. Um, since you get so many things now that are, are powered by uh, the USB. So that's done uh, via back here with this switching regulator. It is a uh, LM2576 uh, regulator. Actually, I believe they both are. I only could read the number off this back one. But this is the fixed 5 volt version and this one's the adjustable version. There's three filter caps on here. So I've got this one here. Uh, this is an extra uh, filter on the input because I didn't want to rely on these guys because of the uh, just the the path is a little bit uh, long. There's a, a lot of wire and, and traces between them, so I added another another cap right in there, and then I've got these two output caps here. A little bit uh, went a little bit big on the output, but. Uh, Help smooth it a little bit more I guess it just uh, so there's not too much there's no voltage divider on the uh, with the fixed output but this uh, variable output of course has or the adjustable output has uh, has to have a divider network so in there somewhere is uh, one resistor for the divider network and the other one is this uh, pod up here and as you can see there's a uh, a little resistor there that I soldered directly across the uh, terminals and that was just to trim it in. So rather than messing around with the other half of the divider I figured out a divider that would give me roughly the, the um, maximum voltage that I was looking for and then I just added a uh, resistor in here to trim this uh, this pot so that when it's cranked all the way the maximum voltage would stay down to about 12 volts. I didn't want to go uh, up over that. And then I have this uh, this little panel meter here. Um, I didn't check when I was pricing out uh, the parts to make sure that I got the right one that has the three wire input. So it has a separate uh, voltage input. Some of the, them uh, take their power right off the voltage being measured, which limits the low end down to uh, like three volts or so three or four volts is the minimum that you can uh, put into them, whereas this one can go right down. So that's uh, all there is really to to the thing. It's not that complicated. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, I had some constraints. And one of the things that I, I did when I was building it, I wanted to keep the uh, cost down. And I was trying to design a power supply that without the case could be around $10. Fortunately, I didn't quite uh, succeed. I, so a few of these parts, I based the pricing uh, based on buying small lots of it. So buying like, you know, 10 or 20 of the parts at a time. Uh, a lot of them I priced out singly, and I probably did get a better price on a lot of this stuff because um, I, I do buy a lot of parts that I think I might use uh, a lot of in, in small quantities, uh, depending on what the part is and the price. Sometimes I'll even buy things in, in the hundreds uh, just to get a, a good deal if it's something that I think I'm going to go through, like a common diode um, <clears throat> or my resistors and that. I mean, I, but anyways, it didn't quite make it. Uh, the total cost, if I were to build another one of these now, would be uh, 1333 and I don't think a lot of the prices have changed that much. Yeah, this is it. It's... Uh, not a perfect uh, supply. It's not meant to be. Now for a first power supply, I would not recommend building this and using one of these electronic transformers. A better way is to go out and uh, simply purchase uh, 
or you can usually salvage uh, those wall wart adapters or uh, you know something along that lines like a, um, a old laptop power supply they can usually be had fairly cheap but uh, you know I wanted something that plugged directly in into the wall like this so like I said it came about from researching I found a product and somebody saying no it can't be done you can't use it the way you want to and uh, that just sort of spurred me on to prove that they're wrong so I did create this um, you know for that purpose and uh, yeah I guess we could hook it up although we did see in the previous uh, one of my previous videos I did show uh, the 5 volt rail under load but we'll hook up the adjustable uh, output and see what it looks like on the scope all right, well, that's it for this time, and uh, till next time.